It may look like a big gray and black brain or something out of your worst nightmare, but it's called Huit La Coche, and today we're making tacos out of it. Huit La Coche, usually called corn smut in the US, is a plant disease caused by the Huit La Coche fungus. It is a fairly rare occurrence as it occurs on the corn as they ripen after a rainstorm. The infection causes the kernels to swell up into bulbous growths that are silvery gray and black. In the US, it is not often seen because most corn is sprayed with fungicide to get rid of it. However, in Mexico, it is seen as a delicacy, and ears of corn with wheat lacoche actually sell for a lot more than regular corn. Some other cool facts about wheat lacoche, other than being a lot of fun to say, are it has additional nutritional value than regular corn. The metabolic process that occurs in the corn actually produces additional nutrients. Wheat lacoche is loaded with lysine, whereas regular corn has almost none. Lysine is one of the essential amino acids, so my vegetarian and vegan friends, look no further than Huit Lacoche for your lysine fix. Another cool fact is that in 1989, Chef Josefina Howard served an all Huit Lacoche dinner at the James Beard House. I mean, if it's good enough for the James Beard Foundation, it's good enough for me. Now that you have some cool Huit Lacoche facts that you can spit at your next dinner party or drinks, let's make some tacos. So to actually make these tacos, it is pretty easy. And Huit Lacoche can be kind of messy stuff, it gets a little bit black, but basically all that you want to do is just peel off the Huit Lacoche from the outside of the corn. And you can give it a rough chop if you want to, though I forgot to film this part of me doing it. And you want to just make sure you remove all the silk from the corn as well. And you can see mine's kind of like a little bit mushy that because it was sitting for a little bit longer than it should have. But if you do find some corn smut, don't worry about it. It'll wash off pretty nicely and you'll get these nice chunks. With the wheat lacoche ready, we're just going to slice up the rest of our ingredients. So I'm going to start with just a white onion. And I did want to show you this little tip. If you get to the end nub of an onion, just flip it over if you're doing slices and cut slices down that way. And you'll get a pretty uniform shape to the earlier slices. Now we're just going to slide that off to the side and smash up two cloves of garlic and just give them a very rough chop. And I am using my little tip video, so I, if you see me reach off to the side, I have a bowl there where I'm just throwing my scraps away. Very useful tip. If you guys want to see how I do that and set that up, go check out the video. And then last but not least, I had a poblano that we had roasted a couple days ago and it was left over, so a perfect use for this taco. And to do this, you can just slice it sideways and roll the pepper, and then you'll end up with this flat piece of pepper, which is great and easy for slicing. With all our vegetables prepped, let's go fry these up. Now I'm just putting this over about a medium heat in a cast iron and adding just a little bit of olive oil. And basically all that we're gonna do is saute everything together, starting with the garlic and the onion since those are raw. And then I'm gonna come in with some salt. As always, make sure you're adding salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I'm also adding ghost pepper. So ghost pepper is gonna provide nice heat and it also balances really well with the wheat lacoche. It kind of, the wheat lacoche has like this earthy kind of nutty flavor and that bonds really well and kind of dulls the spice of that ghost pepper. And the Huit Lacoche really doesn't need much time at all. You're probably gonna cook it with the Huit Lacoche less than maybe two to three minutes. So I'm coming in with that. And then since the roasted poblano is already cooked, I'm just coming in with that at the end for maybe 30 seconds, just to make sure it gets warm and up to par. But really that's all there is to it. Super easy and quick vegetarian taco. Let's give these thing a taste test. So when it really boils down to it, 
Huitilacoche is really not all that weird. It's kind of just like cooking with a different kind of mushroom. I mean, as long as you don't mind your taco filling looking kind of black, it's really not any different. But this is the cooked Huitilacoche and it really only needed a couple minutes and we're just gonna try this straight up first. And it's really like a neutral earthy flavor. There's nothing that's necessarily weird or like really off about it. It's really just like a neutral earthy flavor that, you know, you kind of expect from some mushrooms. Some people do call this like the Mexican truffle. Um, truffles are a lot more like aromatic. This I wouldn't really say is all that aromatic. It just got like a nice earthy flavor to it. But anyway, let's make a taco out of this. And if you see, Almost Taco Tuesday almost didn't happen because this is the end of the tacos. So we're doing with what we got. But I'm just going to load these up with a little bit of the Huitilacoche, Poblanos, onion, and garlic mixture. Then hitting it with some pickled onions, which have not been on this show in a while. Give it a fresh little sprinkle of cilantro. And then I'm just going to hit it with a little slice of tomato. Still looks pretty decent, I would say. Well, let's get a second taste test. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's nothing really that weird about it from like a taste or texture. Like this would kind of just be like cooking up a mushroom taco, say if you're using oyster mushrooms or just maybe the little button mushrooms, something like that. Like it's really, there's nothing really all that odd about it. It definitely has more of like that earthy kind of flavor, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, good taco. So yeah, next time you see some fungus on the end of your corn, don't, don't throw it away right away. Maybe you want to make a taco out of it. Have a little, uh, have a little snack, you know? But like I said, this can be bought at the Mexican grocery stores. They usually either sell it in cans or jars from what I've seen. But yeah, it's always fun to experiment with new things and new ingredients. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and drop me a like and subscribe if you did. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.